Of prime importance to pilots and ground observers, his ability to tell friend from foe without delay. On land and sea, the current war has emphasized that speedy identification, especially of hostile sky forces, is a matter of life and death. crucible of conflict, the RAF has learned to stress recognition as the keystone of intelligent air attack and defense. Their experience proves how essential it is for all military and civilian observers to recognize quickly leading types of foreign aircraft. From the very shadow of hostile wings, we can learn enough to clip them. This is the Messerschmitt ME-109. Germany's famous single-seat fighter. Like all German army aircraft, it is marked with huge black crosses outlined in white on the fuselage and wings. In addition, the Messerschmitt carries a swastika on each side of the vertical tail group. The markings are, however, of slight value, except at close quarters. For long-range recognition, Silhouettes tell far more to a skilled observer. This head-on approach of a low-wing monoplane identifies it as an ME-109 by its tail struts. All but the very latest model have this distinctive construction, which differentiates the majority of Messerschmitts from any comparable pursuit types. Another ME-109 feature in head-on approach is the almost clean line beneath from wingtip to wingtip the slightly projecting radiators being virtually invisible in the newest ships. Overhead, the ME-109 square-tipped wings give it away. Although later models have rounded wings, this conformation is characteristically German. In addition, the bullet-shaped nose, long slender fuselage, and small tail group are outstanding clues to the ME-109's identity. From the side, Features aiding recognition are again the bullet-shaped nose, the long slender fuselage, and the small tail group. To a flyer, a bird's eye view offers the same clues. The pilot's cockpit is very evident here. Comparison of the ME-109 with our own P-40 accentuates features which make the Messerschmitt a marked ship. It will be noted that the ME-109 is much smaller than the P-40 and has three distinctive differences, readily apparent. First, the Messerschmitt 109, although powered with a liquid-cooled engine, has a comparatively blunt nose, while the P-40's spinner is pointed. From the side, this difference between the noses is quite obvious. Second, the square-tipped wings are in direct contrast to the P-40's larger, rounded wing formation. Third, the tail groups differ markedly, the ME-109's tail assembly being much smaller. The tail wheel is retractable in later models, but the shape of the tail remains unmistakable. Thus, in passing flight, the structural differences just noted between the P-40 and the ME-109 expedite identification. The ME-109's armament generally consists of four fixed guns, cockpit guns, or 20 mm nose cannon, firing 60 rounds each, and wing guns firing 1,000 rounds each. All guns are set to fire approximately 430 yards in the direction of flight. The vulnerable area of the Messerschmitt 109 extends from the nose to the junction of the fuselage and trailing edge of the wing. 
In this side view, the vulnerable area again is obvious. The fuel tanks follow the contours of the pilot's seat. The main tank behind him, the reserve tank beneath him. Although later models are better protected, the tanks are still vulnerable to incendiary bullets and shells. The engine of the ME109 is also vulnerable to well-directed fire, many Messerschmitts being brought down during dogfights by a single hit in the engine. It is also reported that the radiators are likewise extremely vulnerable. For pilots who must be able to identify and engage the foe at a moment's notice, flying characteristics offer invaluable clues. The RAF has proven time and again in actual combat that the pilot who not only recognizes the enemy, but knows his weak spot, is in a position to deal a death blow. For his own protection, the pilot must also know his opponent's strong point. In the ME-109, this is a remarkable rate of climb. 10,000 feet in three minutes, 20,000 feet in six and four tenths minutes. At this critical altitude, the latest model can make 380 miles per hour. Hence, when in a tight spot, the ME-109 will often break off combat and climb, relying on its speed to escape. However, the ME-109, particularly the earlier models, cannot make tight turns and can be outmaneuvered by a pursuit plane like our own P-40 that can. The Curtis Tomahawk in England, which is similar to our P-40, has been reported as outmaneuvering ME-109s by diving right spiral. Any airplane like the ME-109, incapable of the P-40's last-minute pullout, can thus be virtually led to destruction. <laughs> 